everyone. Welcome to lesson 12.6, the last lesson of the year. Our last flip lesson. Wow, what a wild ride it's been, huh? We've had some great times together. I've tried to do a cartwheel. Um, we've cried together. I've told some jokes. No one's laughed. It's been a great time. But this is our last one, so give yourself a pat on the back, especially if you've done all the hard work this year. Let's begin. I will be able to select an appropriate graph slash display for a set of data. So like lesson 12.4, we are mostly going to be observing graphs and talking about them. Not the most exciting thing the end of the year on, but let's have fun anyways. All right, just a review of the graphs and charts and displays we've talked about this unit. We have line plots, which basically show how much for each piece of data. This gives you a real in-depth look. We have box and whiskers, which gives you a quick overview of your lowest score, your highest score, or your lowest and highest amount of data, your first quartile, your third quartile, and your median right away. We've talked about histograms, which has intervals, so um, and the frequency of how often something happens. And we've done line graphs. These line graphs show how data changes over time. One we did not talk about, but I'm sure you remember from last year because you had a great teacher, is bar graphs. And bar graphs are a quick and easy one to pick up on and remember. It's based well, this bar graph right here is your favorite shampoo survey. So these are the shampoos A, B, C, D, E, and F. Those are the brands. And this is how many number of responses people like them the best. So 35 people like A. So, and let's say um, 42 or 43 like C the best, that was the most. Bar graphs are good for comparing things like this. So you might want to do a bar graph with what's your favorite sport? Baseball, football, basketball, those are the only really important ones, right? Maybe hockey, I don't know. Anyways, you could do your favorite color, red, blue, green, and the amount. So bar graphs are pretty easy, I think. But anyways... Each graph is used for different reasons, and some graphs are better than others for different kinds of data. So this chart, which is on page 910, if you need to use it tomorrow during the lesson or tonight to refer to if you have your book, this chart's on there. Type of display. A bar graph is best to show the number of items in, a spe in specific categories, like we just talked about, and to compare them. Box and whisker plots are showing measures of variation for a set of data, they're also useful for large sets of data, if there is um, some outliers on there. And I like box and whisker plots right away so I can see where my lower quartile, like if I'm grading tests, my lower quartile and my upper quartile, where they are right away. Histograms, oh those histograms, they show the frequency of data divided into equal intervals. So when you're trying to figure out how often something happens, you're going to want to use a histogram. Line plots. Not line graphs, let's not get these confused. Line plots show how many times each number occurs. All right, so line plots are very specific. You can see right away how much of each number that happened. And a line graph, which we use for our stock project, shows change over a period of time, the ups and the downs um, over time. So line graphs are great for time. All right, so this lesson is just basically looking at graphs and asking questions about them. So let's try one right now. Which of these two graphs we have a line, um, sorry, line plots? Am I saying that right now? I'm getting confused. Yes, we have a line plot and we have a box and whisker plot, which would allow us to find the mode. I'm going to let that sink in, let you look at that real quick. What's the answer? I'll call on you. You're correct. The top one, the line plot, would allow us to find the mode right away. The most number that occurs is 27. I can find the mode right away using a line plot. I cannot find the mode at all using a box and whisker because I don't have the actual data in here. I only have, the only two pieces of data I have are my lowest number and my highest number. All right. I have three questions now to analyze. What kind of display would allow us to find the median right away? Think about that. While you're thinking about it, let's go back and look which one of these would allow us to find the median right away. I'll call on, no, not you. How about 
you right there. Yes, you. You're correct. The box and whisker plot lets us find the median right away because it's there's a dot in the middle of the box or somewhere in the box, right? Okay, good job. Um, width display would allow us to compare money made from one year to another. So we're talking about time. We're comparing money from one year to another. Let's think. Hmm, let's go with you this time. You're correct. It is a line graph because it goes over a period of time. So this one says weeks, but if we want to know from year after year, it's right there. So the x-axis is your time period. And last but not least, one more question of the year before you do a question for me. What display would allow me to quickly see how many students scored an 85 on my test? So what kind of display? If I want to see how many students scored an 85 right away, Anybody have any answers? No one? No one's raising their hand. Okay, I'll answer this one. It's a line plot because I, let's pretend that number two was the number 85. I could see right away that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people scored an 85. I can't even probably see that number so far away. But yes, line plots give you a specific number right away. Like in this one, how many people had three pets? There's number three. I could see there's four of them. How many people had no pets? Four as well. I know it's kind of hard to see, but line plots give you specific numbers that we need to find right away, how many of each amount. So all these graphs have their benefits. Some of them will be more beneficial for you later in life, depending on whatever jobs you use, or maybe you won't even use any of them. You know, that's the way life goes. But at least you know, you have that knowledge, and no one could take that knowledge away from you. Okay, so, once again, that's on page 910, explaining when they're best used. I have three questions for you to end this, to end this last, I'm kind of gearing up right here, our last flip class. What display would you use to find the favorite cafeteria lunch item for sixth graders? All right, which one would be the favorite? Looking back on here, would it be the bar graph or one of these four? The temperature from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., so something's changing over time, what would you use? And number three, the amount of tacos each student ate. What would you use? What kind of graph would you use for that one? All right, good luck. Bring in your homework tomorrow, please. And I will see you. Well, I'll see you when I see you, but this is the last time you're going to watch this video. Unless, of course, next year you get bored and you want to watch them again. Go right ahead. Bye-bye.